everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to be returning to the Gilded Age Bustle Dress Project. This is a natural form bustle from the late 1870s. I think I dated it to about like 1877, 1878 or so. I mentioned that in my first video on this project, which I know was a few weeks ago, but I will link those videos, the first two videos, down below in the description. And just as a reminder, this is what I am working on right now. So the skirt is, it is finished, but it also may not be finished. And I say that because it is possible that I will need to add some tapes within the skirt to kind of bunch the back together like you see on this plate. However, it may be that the overskirt actually does that job for us. So that's why I haven't done that yet. So now we are going to be working on the bodice slash overskirt because it is all in one. And in fact, the fronts are cut with no waist seam even. So this is going to be very exciting and very challenging. And I'm not sure how long this is going to take. And I realized yesterday that it is one month to the Victorian festival in Port Townsend, where I do plan to wear this. So I kind of have to get it finished. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mocking up the pattern or I'm going to be patterning slash mocking up the pattern for this bodice. Now, if you've watched any of my other Victorian bodice projects before, you will know that I've mentioned that I have kind of a go-to bodice block. And I created that bodice block in a class several years ago at this point, but I really use it kind of as my jumping off point as my base for frankly, everything Victorian. And a few years ago in 2019, I made a natural form gown. It's the only other natural form gown that I have made. And I used that bodice block as a starting point and then really heavily deviated from that bodice block. And that was for this dress right here. So this dress, again, this is same era, natural form era, late 1870s. And it actually kind of has a lot of similar shapes in that it's got like a thing that kind of comes around and then kind of holds the skirt together. But also it's very, very different. But what is pretty similar is the general shape of the bodice. Uh, somewhat similar. So I already was kind of looking at how I could take this pattern, which I still have the pattern that I created for this, how I could take this pattern and change it to what I need. Now, if you remember going back to my first video on this project, I showed you the sketches that I had made up for the front and the back of this project. And the back in particular, what makes it quite a bit different is that it has a center back decorative panel that has a decorative lacing sort of thing design going through that center back panel. What makes this difficult is that the center back panel, at least the way that I've designed this in my head and hopefully in the original garment, it was cut with no center back seam. I'm a big fan of the center back seam. My back is sway backed and so the center back seam really helps the fact that I have like kind of a large mid back, a narrow shoulders, so top of the back, and then narrow at the waist in the back. So center back seams are very helpful. However, we do have a lot of other seams in this back section, so hopefully not having a center back seam won't be that much of a problem. So what I have done so far, I am going to just use the side back and side center back. There's three pieces to the back basically from my original pattern from the green dress. And that is that there is the center back piece, which was cut with a seam down the center. And then there was a piece next to that and another piece next to that. And then the front piece. So <laughs> six pieces total in the back. I am going to be doing seven pieces total in the back. The side two pieces are staying the same from what I had before. We're just changing where the hem went to because this is gonna be shorter than that where this bodice goes to in the back. However, the center back piece got a lot of manipulation and changes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the piece laid out on the table and I can show you what all I've done and then we can hopefully cut these into mock-up pieces and hopefully the whole bodice will fit. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So what I have laid out here is the back piece of the 
green dress that's hanging right here and also the back piece of my go-to pattern and I laid them out together because you can see that there are a lot of differences for one thing this is a day bodice that was an evening gown so the day bodice neckline is what I'm going to be using up here and so this will help me know where to fill in the neckline but also the pattern here was already narrowed out and because I've already compensated for that with the other pieces of the back I want to start with this narrower piece right here this is also very curvy over the rear end and that is really what I'm going for as well so I've drawn out some chalk lines on here that you can probably see and the first thing that I did was I had to make the center back one straight line since it's going to be cut on a fold so I just started with where the seam allowance was over here but it's going to wind up getting like bigger off here because I had curved it in there and then it's going to wind up getting ex very much smaller over here over the rear end. So then I went and I kind of looked at my drawing right here and I looked at okay how wide do I want the waist to be? How wide do I want it to be at the neck? How wide do I want it to be at the bottom? And what I would need to do to get those measurements for the half size of those measurements because this is just one half of that back piece and I drew it on based on this being the fold line right here and so I determined that I wanted the waist for example to be one and a quarter inches wide I think the neckline was two inches wide I want to say that's what I went for and then down here I think was 2.75 inches wide and then I drew in this line right here to meet those markings and this piece this weird piece once it's on the fold will be the center back piece then I went and I kind of did the opposite and I figured out okay how much did that take away from the back piece that I need to now put into an additional side center back piece so that then is what this portion of this piece is and basically from this line there will be seam allowance added so I'm just playing with this without seam allowance at all so I've kind of marked in you know seam allowance will go that way for this piece seam allowance will go this way for this piece and so here I've just done like the rest of the piece because this was the full width it had the seam allowance and everything this was the full width but then once we get down to past the waist then it overlaps so I've done a dotted line for where this center side back piece will go to over here. And I basically did the math of, okay, so if this piece is this wide here, then that means that it's leaving out this portion and this portion. How much do I need to add to get back those two portions and that is where this dotted line comes in and you see it crosses the center back line even so like by the time we get down to the bottom it's going to be over here all the way out to over here and then I'm going to be adding like the seam allowance and everything so it's <laughs> it's quite complicated and now I have to go through and lay this down I've also folded up the hem just to be hopefully the right length but now I have to go through and like cut this out in a new piece because I don't want to do anything to this pattern piece so I'm going to cut this out on new pieces of fabric I'm going to cut out the center back piece on the fold and the two center side backs and then put them together along with I'm just going to use these since I already have them I'm going to use those and I will just mark where the hem needs to be shortened to but I'm going to put all of those together and I'm also then going to take the bodice front over here this is my extremely marked up bodice front pattern because what I've tried to do is I've tried to notate what lines go with what bodice so like you can see this was like the plaid 1880s that I made a while ago this was my fairy godmother 1890s ball gown velvet gown Elsa etc I've done all of these markings on here and so what this is going to be this is just going to be normal honestly like I think it's probably going to be the same as maybe like fairy godmother or something day bodice like well actually it's going to have a higher neckline probably up here but this is going to just be normal but it's going to be super super long and I'm even going to do this in a mock-up so I can figure out how to do it it's going to go all the way down to nearly the hem and then the sides what will wind up being over here which I'll have to figure out the flare on this because yeah, the darts and the flare, that's going to be confusing. But the sides will get bunched up and they will be attached mostly to this additional other panel that the other panel will also get like scrunched up a little and then we'll have this tail down here. So it's a very weird dress. We're going to see how well this mock-up goes, but uh, let's go cut out a mock-up. 
So the mock-up of the bodice is all now put together. I've used a whole bevy of different fabrics. You can see the center back piece here that I had patterned. I have not yet tried it on because instead what I'm currently doing is I'm working with trying to figure out all of like what's going on with the side here. So if you remember from here, you can see like the part underneath the bows where it all picks up and everything. So that's what I've been trying to do over here with all of this. But but I think that I actually flared the skirt out way too wide because it shouldn't be swinging backwards like this. It should be like coming quite even. So yeah, I had cut it out with like a flare just kind of continuing from the hips. I think it's too much, but I don't want to cut it off yet. The other thing is, you can see in the mirror here, I actually cut the muslin side, which is the other front, the wrong type. I forgot the fact that it has pleats, and so I just cut it to where it should end, and therefore it doesn't have pleats. It's just shaped up already. So that is the shape I think that I'm going for, but again, I think it's just too full around. I have not not made the weird piece that like ties in the back and starts from right here and connects to all this. This is all just pinned to a grain ribbon right now, but yeah, I think I need to do some work. Then I'm going to go ahead and try the whole thing on. I have repleated this whole thing now, folding in quite a large section. So this is how much width I've lost, like all the way to there. That's probably good 15 inches, I'd say, of width by the time it gets to the bottom. And I feel like it is hanging at least a bit better. The other thing is that I've decided to try to do like the back taily bit here. I've just ripped some muslin and then I ran gathering stitches along here, but it is not giving me the look that I want at all. So I think that this also will wind up being pleated. I think just like pleating it to a tape is going to be easier and give me more control. So I'm going to take this off and try and pleat it, see if that's any better. I think this is also too wide a piece by like quite a bit. And obviously it's all in muslin and stuff so it's gonna drape totally differently than silk but yeah I think this needs to be a lot narrower. So I've now repleated this side there's just like a few pleats like a big one there there and then a few small ones down here and I think that that is what I want because I sort of bunched up over here but it should have like a straight pull here and then it swoops down a little bit here and then up again just as reference this is what I'm talking about straight pull swoop down and up and then it falls into the tail. And I haven't cut this long enough at all. I've also only got one of them, so it has nothing to attach to. The other thing that I'm honestly not sure about is it could very well be that like we've got three pieces here. So one piece here, one of the same on the other side, and those are then attached together. And then there's a separate waterfall tail coming down. So otherwise we're gonna have two tails and I just kind of feel like in the plate like you can see this tail hanging down here but then this is the underskirt so it feels like I mean it could be here and on the other side it could be but hmm, I don't know <laughs> I might need to kind of do some more experimenting but I think that this is probably enough to be getting on with now I don't think I'm gonna try the same thing on the other side just because the other side doesn't have the pleats like this but time to try it on so one more thing before I put it on, I just realized that like it kind of has to be a separate piece because the stripes are going vertical on both of these. And if you look here, <laughs> yes, I did do another side to it. If you look here, if the stripes are vertical here, then they would be horizontal here because it's coming in like this and then turning. So therefore I think these have to just go to here, probably get sewn together right here. And then another piece is sewn like to the back underside and then flipped over. And that would then create vertical stripes and just one single piece down here, as opposed to right now I do have like these two tails that just kind of blend together. But yeah, that's how it would have to be if these both get vertical stripes. So it is not bad by all means, but it is also not quite right. And one of the obvious things that I just have not done yet is the darts in the bodice. I originally had done them actually down to about here. I wound up picking them out as soon as I put them on to the waist, to the actual natural waist. And I still feel like something is maybe off and I'm tempted to just undo them all together and then like pinch them out. I mean, they're pretty okay from like bust to waist, but then like this one winds up going off this way, which I suppose could work, but it seems odd. 
so I'm not really sure but again like the darts are open right now from below the waist they will be tapered out but I'm not really sure in what direction because having these darts go like this and then like this is kind of weird if that's what they're wanting to do so we'll see about that the other thing that I don't think you can see because I think we're off frame is that I actually don't think that I made the center front large enough. I know that I didn't make the center front large enough because I had intended for this to have a one and a half inch like area past where it met at the center front to make the button flap and this is not one and a half inches. I think in some places we're down to maybe one inch through the bodice and then once we get past the waist it's down to like half inch and even that it should it wants to be open more. I don't know if you can see but there are these wrinkles going like this right now and that's because this skirt wants to be open in the middle so I think what needs to happen and I don't think I would need to make another mock-up for this honestly but I think what needs to happen is a lot of places it just needs to get like a half inch added through here and then from the waist down we just need to open it up so that it it gets even more <laughs> more than a half inch probably probably at least one and a half inches added extra well no more than that because you need the button flap probably about two and a half inches maybe even three inches added extra by the time that it gets down to the hem I do like the look of how the drape is going here so I think I can cut that excess off on this side it's clearly the center front where it was needed not the side and I realized my frame is not big enough but see the drape looks pretty good so I am really liking that I can't really see the back. I am wondering if there's honestly a little too much extra right in here because I wanted this to be pretty smooth over the bum pad and I feel like there's just a little bit of extra, like maybe two inches extra or something like that. But I think that may actually be something that I leave for once I cut it out in the silk and I can really see how the drape is going, maybe even like after I pin the trims on it, because I know that adding the heavy tassels is going to change things. So we shall see how that part goes too. But yeah, it's close. I mean, the fit all through the bodice and everything, I think it's really good. It's just, frankly, the split of the skirt and figuring out what these darts are doing that's gonna be the important part. I can't really see what's going on in the back with the bunching together. I feel like it feels right. You can probably see it better than I can. So I guess I'll just have to watch the video and see. But I am going to do the third piece coming over so that I can get that stripe direction correct. But yeah, I mean, I think I'm really on the right track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the dart situation, get those pinned into place, and then I'm going to open up this center front where I have it pinned shut and just see how much fabric needs to be added there. And then I think I can just cut it. It's going to be in the silk and it's going to be lined with cotton sateen. And I think I'll be able to just cut it. Okay, so I have done some tweaks to this. For one thing, I completely undid the darts and then I've just pinned it out like a fin on this side, I should say. I have not touched this side at all, but this is the side that I'm really gonna be working with because this is the one that I had remembered to do the pleaty bit on and not cut it like this one. So that is fixed now. The dart is not veering super off. I realized that the reason that it was wanting to do that was because the whole dress was actually trying to pull to the back. So like my side seam wasn't going down the side it was side and then pulling to the back because the little this tail bit was too tight so it was actually pulling the whole dress front towards the back that was also really the reason that was causing most of the issues with the center front where it was like bowing out like that it still needs to be released a little bit but it's actually just to fit over the ruffles and everything not because it needed to so it just needs to go out like a little bit not nearly as much as I thought it was going to and the darts by the way this first dart goes all the way down to here at the point and then the second dart stops a little lower it's or it's a little higher it stops right here so they're very very long darts it also I think helped like I was getting a little pulling, you can still see some of it I think right here. You, I was getting a little pulling right here and by redoing the darts I have alleviated that pulling. So that is great. So I think at this point one of the things I was trying to figure out was 
the slope of the side. Again, I do think that the back is a little bit, or, you know, at least a couple inches too big. And I think that needs to be tapered out of the back and side, center, back, the back, and then the next piece next to it, center back and next piece next to it. I think that just needs to be tapered out a little out of both pieces and that should fix that. So I will try that out. And then the other thing is that I think the slope is not quite right. I think the length in the back, it's either right on or it's within an inch, as in it's possibly up to an inch too long in the center back of this part right here. But I think this part is too long. So I have actually already marked a mark. It's right here, even with this first pleat, that I'm going to slope this up further. So it comes up to more of an angle, slope it up to there, and that will be the bottom of that piece. And then I have to remember to add in, you know, enough to hem it or something. because That's important. And also, of course, then that will move this up a little, but I don't think it will affect anything there. I think I can just kind of take some of the pleats out and that will be fine. So that is good. So I think we're really getting places. I mean, again, I definitely do need to increase how much of an overlap I have in the center front here. And I need to do those little tweaks to the back, but I think that is pretty much it. Like, I think my back alterations actually worked out pretty well. I've got, whenever I wear a corset, I've got a terribly lumpy back above the top of my corset, which I hate, but you know what? That's life when you're plus size, right? It's gotta go somewhere when you tighten your corset and mine goes up a little too. So that's what's going on up here, why it looks like it fits weirdly. It's not, it's just me. So yay. Um, but the rest of it I think is fitting really, really well through the back. So I guess I did all my math right and all my alterations right. And it was just the little tapering down here that was not quite off. So yeah, it's close. I'm going to see if I can fix these things. I don't know if I can see if I can and like put them on again. And I'm going to mark all of my darts and like where it's currently pinned up the front so that I know how much to add. So I'm not going to bother with pinning all of this back up, but I did take in the curves in that like center side back piece. I took out three quarters inch on the fold. So really I took out an inch and a half on each side. And I think that that has perfectly fixed the curve. Like I feel like it seems nice and fitted to the bum pad and everything underneath right now. So that's great. I also folded up the pink right here and then tapered that out as it goes to the back. And I really like the shape of that now. I think that was spot on. I marked all of my center overlap bits. I've marked my darts. So I think that I can start to cut out things. I also have to cut away all of the excess in this portion because remember I've left that excess in there. So I'll have to do that. And by the end of this, I should wind up with a pattern. I don't know if I'm gonna be showing you any more in this video though, as it is Saturday night right now. Yeah, I kind of wound up with all of the sewing this week today. <laughs> So I got the mock-up that I wanted though, so that is great. And I will see if I will have anything more to show you tomorrow. So I'm cutting out all of the pieces right now and I've gotten to the last piece, which is the bodice front. And annoyingly, it is literally one inch too big to fit on the fold. So I have to cut this whole thing out four times separately because both fabrics are the same width. But the other bit that is very weird is this is the shape that I wound up with. Like, what is going on here? Do you see this? It's got like hip lump, but then also other lump. And my tendency is to smooth out one, at least, if not both of those lumps. But I kind of worry that like that will take away the shape. It's just, especially this one, like it's just weird. I just want to kind of take that in like a quarter inch. Well, I don't know. I mean, I might. And also look how far in it comes at the bottom, which actually this I've also kind of smoothed out because it should come into this orange line right here. But it just felt so extreme to taper in from like about here down to this orange line. It felt so curvy that it just didn't seem right. So I will take it out if it needs to be. But yeah, it's, oh, it's a really, really weird shape. And of course, it's humongous and too big for my very, very messy sewing table also. So... Uh, why do I keep making things with these big pieces?
Well, I smoothed out both lumps just a tiny bit, like we're talking less than an eighth of an inch. There's still like it divots in right here, which it probably needs to come out an eighth of an inch, but I'm too afraid to take any more off. So we will just leave it like that and I will now cut out the other three pieces of this front piece. I've decided to use lightweight cotton twill from Joann's as my flat lining and as you can see here I am currently in the process of doing said flat lining so this is all pinned around the outsides right now ready to be surged because I'm going to surge all of the edges to stick the flat lining to the outer. The other thing that I'm going to do on these front pieces, you can see I think that I have my darts marked, hopefully you can see those orange lines, and that I've pinned near them as well. I'm actually going to baste right pretty much on but just slightly in from those orange marks and that will serve as both a way to keep the layers together in the center since this is such a large piece and also it will serve as the lines that I can use to make my darts. It helps more than the iron offable lines. So that's what's going on here. I'm in the process of doing the pinning and marking the darts and all of that for all of the other pieces right now but it is Sunday night. You knew this was coming when I did all of the mock-up stuff yesterday on Saturday. That's all that's going to be for this video this week. Next week I will be putting together the entire bodice. So I'm going to pick up just where I left off with everything being all flatlined and ready to assemble next week and I'm very excited to get this all together. One of the big things that I'll be figuring out is how to do the faux lacing detail in the back. That's a big question mark in my mind right now. And then of course once everything is assembled, there's all of the embellishments and everything. So we'll see how far I get next week. But if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, such as next week's video, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram. So please please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Julie, and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!